Hi, Nick Smith here. I'm going to run through um, a quick setup routine for the outdoor module of Lighting Reality. Um, the first thing we need to do um, is to, to load in um, a drawing, um, browse to the location. It goes to My Documents Lighting Reality DXS as the default location, um, and we can go to. Once the drawing is loaded, it brings up this dialog box here. Go to set area, that will set the extent of the calculation area to the extent of the drawing. And then go to select area to zoom in on the area of interest that we want to um, apply the lighting design to. Um, I've got a separate tutorial that um, that deals with the, the preparation of drawings. This drawing is actually in millimetres, you can see here from scale factor. Um, the drawing ideally wants to be in metres, um, and I'll, I'll deal with that on a separate um, piece of video. Um, but this scale factor here shows you that the drawing is in is in millimetres. So I've set that up. The next thing I need to do, again, I always recommend you work left to right on the screen. Start off um, uh, putting in the project information. the uh, project number, the designer's name comes in by default as does the date and you can add um, title page notes if you want to as well. The second icon in is is really important. Um, we need to set up our calculation area so that the grid spacing is less than one and a half meters and we have this coloring scheme within the program so if it's red you really, really need to do something about it. Um, if it's amber um, or this sort of yellowy colour, um, then um, you um, you could ideally need to do something about it. And as we increase the grid number of grid points, you can see here that the grid spacing changes, and then ultimately it'll go white, and that is go ahead and do your lighting design. And the same thing in the y-axis as well. There's two reasons for this. Um, three reasons actually the first one is um, one and a half meters or less is the requirement of the European standard um, EM 13201 part 3 section 7.2.9 in the 2015 edition um, also we utilize um, these grid points here to calculate the ISO contours within lighting reality and um, and thirdly, once you go much below about one and a half meters, the uniformity values that we calculate in the quality figures up here remain pretty much the same. Um, I always recommend you put in um, a name for the grid and also you use some kind of color as well. And when we talk about multiple grids, um, which I'm going to do in a, in a separate um a separate screencast uh, it it becomes important particularly using the roads the the name for the grid and also the coloring as well okay so I'm just going to turn the points off and the grid off um, we're in um, luminaire editing mode up here in the top so I can go through and um, select a luminaire now normally preceding this you would have done a calculation in the roadway program and you would have um, added to the um, the favorites perhaps or you would know the um, the particular fitting that you want to use um, I'm actually going to go through and use a specific one and I'm going to use the the R5 lens we're going to go with say I think probably that one <coughs> um, so I can then go through and insert a column. I'm going to put that there. Um, the, the way I tend to do my lighting design is I tend to use contours. Um, this particular project I'm going to design to um, an average of one and a minimum of five. So I'm going to set the one looks contour. I've turned off the 20. I've set the five looks contour. Um, and I'm going to turn off the other couple as well. So, um, zooming in using the wheel on the mouse, you can of course use the uh, magnifying glass up here and the hand here to pan around. Um, because I use CAD so much, I, I tend to use the wheel to zoom in and out, and then by pressing the wheel down, we can uh, pan around as well. So, um, 
right click on here, brief explanation of what's going on. Um, the X and Y coordinates are based on the center of that red circle. So as we move the column around, the um, we can see the X and Y coordinates are changing. Um, the height is the vertical inclination of the lantern. Angle is the rotation, and we can rotate the column around. Um, tilt is the ver vertical inclination. Well, we can also pick up the um, the red, the white square, and rotate that around if we if we need to. Um, and the outreach is the dimension from the center of the column to the optical center of the lantern. I'm using the micro here, so I'm going to use um, I'm going to use a value of 0.35. Um, so, if I were to go and um, select another column and insert that over there, it goes back to all of the default values. If I right-click on the red bit, select the Save as Default option, I can then position another column further down the road and others. Um, elsewhere in the project. Uh, let's go there, spin that around, let's go there. It's not a brilliant position that, but it will do. Let's go there. Let's have a column opposite the junction. Let's have a column a bit nope um, we'll have a column definitely there this development is actually going to be extended further here so um, so I've put that column in there with that in mind I know some people like to design what they're doing now but I know that this is going to move on quite quickly this development so um, Probably need another column in there. Let's go with one on the other side of the road. Let's go with one there. Okay, a couple of things at this point. Um, I like to try and create what I call this island effect around the column so that my, and I chose the contour values, I'm looking for an average of five and a minimum of one. <coughs> um, I've um, use those two values and I like to create this island effect. What I tend to find is that if you um, if you start getting um, this process here where, where you start getting the the contour levels merging together what I tend to find that means you've got too much light going on on, on the project but um, we'll we'll go through and um, we'll, we'll, we'll work on that fitting at 3000 lumens and I'll, I'll maybe I'll come back and make some adjustments to that later on you can see how those two are merging together there um, okay so in the top right hand corner up here you can see we've got um, the average, the uh, minimum, and the uniformity. And there are calculation points all over the area. What we need to do is to exclude the calculation points that are outside our area of interest. And we do that using masking. Now, I tend to, um, to blank and cut out. Um, but you can also... So I would use this process like... So, so you can see the results. Um, you you can, if you want to, um, just go through and mask out areas like so. Um, it doesn't really much matter. I'll, I'll do a separate tutorial on um, on masking, I think. Um, but um, okay, so I'm just going to run that around the edge. So, so one of the things to bear in mind is that we um, can pick up any point and then carry on, left click. So I'll pick up that point there, left click, and then I can then carry on with that masking around the area like so, and then right click to finish, left click, and so on. Now. What I tend to do is to go through and put a really rough contour um, masking uh, in something 
like that. And I will then go through and tidy it up after. And there's something in particular that I want to uh, show you. Um, the other thing I try to do is to also use strategic pieces of information on the drawing for where my um, where the points are, um, so that you can you can pick up those points and, um, and move them about because you know where they they are or where they're likely to be. Now, um, I tend to go clockwise with my masking, so that that means I can go through and pick up points and then carry on with the masking around the area, like so and so. Um, however, if you go the other way, then let me just undo what I've just done. If I go the other way, then what you can do is get yourself in a bit of a mess in terms of um, masking. So um, I often find that when you're preparing a project, that is a good point to try and save the design. Um, Okay, so we've got a real, really rough layout there. Um, I'm just going to go hide the masking in the top toolbar. So you can now see how the um, the the points that we had um, set up um, beyond the uh, calculation area that are up going on up here are being used to calculate these um, the outer contours that go beyond the area. So. Um, I'm going to go back to my um, Edit Luminaire option, and I'm just going to move a few of these columns around. I'm going to move that one to there, on the corner. Um, and so on. Um, reasonably happy with those column positions. I've got this island option thing going um, around most of the columns, except here. Um, and it's very possible that what I can do is to go in and change to a lower lumen package fitting. Can you see as I'm um, what I'm looking at is as I reduce the levels, these values here are going down. So that's probably a step too far. So let's go with that option there. Um, and uh, maybe we just have to live with that as um, the way it is. Okay, so that's how we set up. Um, a really quick um, project in lighting reality. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, um, please add them to the um, the area below, um, and I'll respond to those as quickly as I can. You can message me through YouTube. Um, you can tweet me at Nick Smith one two four six through Twitter. You can email me at support at nicksmithassociates.com. And if you found this useful. Um, please subscribe to the, the channel for future updates. And finally, if you have a topic that you want me to cover, please message me through YouTube, uh, through LinkedIn, through Twitter, NickSmith1246, or email me support at nicksmithassociates.com. Um, hope you find this useful, and thank you very much for watching.